me to take the floor from our state representatives who have the same rank as everybody else in this room at this time and call to order the 219th Brookfield Town Meeting. Um, some of our members are not here yet because they are engaged in counting votes next door and we are going to try to get started without them. Um, I may postpone delaying the announcement of the results depending how quickly they get them to me. If we could open with the Pledge of Allegiance. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yes, Lance. Ah, so you can hear me. And here I thought I was loud. I got your attention, though, at the beginning. That worked. Could we now observe a moment of silence in honor of the townspeople who died in the last year and our servicemen who are at risk overseas? Thank you. And I'd like to introduce the Board of Selectmen. Clifton Kemp, our chairman. Bill Nelson and Richard Zach. Are there any new residents of the town present today? If so, if you would please stand, give us your name and your address. Guess not. Is there anyone present today who is not a registered voter? Sam and Beth, you can stand up. I will remind you that it's misdemeanor if you vote if you are not a registered voter. <laughs> Not only that, you're going to sleep in the barn. <laughs> Isn't Are there any anyone else present who's not a registered voter? We have a few announcements. I'm required to announce at this point in time per RSA 675-5 that the town has received a protest petition regarding warrant article number six. John Nelson, I understand you'd like to make an announcement for Tom Jaguar. Yes. Would you like the mic? No, I don't need the mic. Unless you want to. Here we go. Good evening. I uh, like to. Uh, Tell you about Earth Day and what the purpose is. It is a uh, it's to instill awareness and appreciation for the Earth and the environment. And the uh, selectmen, in combination with the uh, Conservation Commission, are organizing a cleanup Brookfield Day. And this has happened in the past, and it's been successful. And uh, this is for all people, and we encourage you to come. This takes place in this building on April 27th from 8 to 10. The selectmen make a scrumptious breakfast, and from there we go to a table where I come here, will provide us with trash bags, uh, gloves, plastic gloves, a map plan, and uh, uh, directions on what to do with trash bags. I conjecture that if it was a day like today, um, we will probably uh, have a table in here and uh, decide on our own when to go up and pick up the trash. But if it's a nice day, we can uh, go up and pick up the bags and uh, swarm around the work field cleaning the trash. So, um, the purpose is to beautify the Brookfield, and uh, we would love to have all of you come out and join us again. We will meet in this building, April 27th, from 8 to 10. See you there. Thank you. 
I would like to call your attention to the town report. On page 29, there was a mistake where it says the Greater Wakefield School at the lower left-hand corner of the page. That should read Governor Wentworth School. The dollar amount is correct. I also would like to make an announcement regarding the bathrooms in this building. The bathrooms in this building are non-functional, so I'm going to ask you all not to be particularly long-winded or we're going to have a problem. <laughs> the bathrooms next door are fine if anybody needs one. Susan Marquet, you asked to make an announcement. State law, RSA 44, uh, the moderator sets the rules and procedures of the meeting. We will not follow Robert's rules of order or any other complicated rules of parliamentary procedure. Instead, we will follow my rules. I cannot promise to run a perfect meeting, but I will do my best to run a fair meeting. Ultimately, though, this is your meeting. By majority vote, you can change my rules or overrule any decision that I make. Rules for debate. Only registered voters may speak unless a majority of the voters present decide otherwise. Those wishing to be recognized should raise their hands or stand. Once the moderator recognizes you, please state your full name. Only one person, the one recognized by the moderator, may speak at any one time. All speakers are expected to direct the debate to the moderator and no conversations directed to others on the floor will be allowed. When you have the floor to speak, you should address the issue under consideration or you will be ruled out of order. Any voter may question a procedural ruling by the moderator by asking to appeal the ruling to the body as a whole. A simple majority is required to overrule the moderator. Questions about the process are encouraged, as it may often seem confusing, 
but everyone should remember that debate leading to decision is the primary purpose of the meeting. Voting on articles. The moderator will not accept motions to call the question until in his judgment all have had a fair opportunity to express their views. The moderator will not accept motions to table or indefinitely postpone an article. If citizens want to dispose of an article, they should simply vote the article down. This prevents the confusion of people having to vote positively to dispose of an article. The moderator will only accept motions to pass over an article if more than one article on the warrant addresses the same question, and then only for the purpose of not confusing a decision reached by the meeting. Only one reconsideration of an article will be recognized. Seven voters are required to question my ruling on the outcome of a vote. If a voice vote is questioned, we will have a show of hands or a division of the House. If the vote remains in question, we will have a secret ballot. This must happen before any other business occurs. Amendments. Motions to amend an article must be in writing. The clerk will have paper and pencils. At the moment, it's the assistant clerk because the clerk is counting votes. The moderator will allow consideration of no more than one amendment at a time, i.e. no motions to amend the motion to amend. Amendments which simply negate the intent of the motion, such as inserting the word not, will be ruled out of order as they confuse people as to which way they intend to vote. To repeat, if citizens want to dispose of an article, they should simply vote the article down. At this time, I ordinarily announce the results of the uh, offices and the warrant articles. Um, as they are counting, I am postponing that until they come back. The uh, first article that we're dealing with on the warrant is article number seven. Virginia's not here. Virginia has appointed her assistant to take her place. Okay. That's what she told me. She didn't tell you that. Okay. Well, uh, well then we can shoot the breeze and tell jokes until she gets here. Would you care to walk over and ask her how long she's going to be? And uh, because I don't like to keep the whole town waiting. Everybody gets tired. I know that there was uh, a county question and they're recounting some of the votes. Does anybody have anything they would like to share at this point in time? I think Mary Lou's going to tell us how to spell her name. <laughs> no, I'll just check it out. Right, thank you.
and I think we should have a party or two. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> so what I would like to propose is that we form a committee called the 225th Anniversary Committee to start now to um, see what the townspeople would like to do. I, of course, have 185 ideas. None of them will all get done. But it would be nice to hear from you what you would like done. If you're interested in being on this committee, it probably will be a subcommittee of the Heritage Commission. Please let me know. Um, or get the word to one of the selectmen or one of the people in the office. We would like to do what you would like to do, but we also need to celebrate our heritage. It's great that we're here 225 years later. Thank you. Recognize Richard. Uh, thank you. Uh, before the meeting started this evening, Tom Land at the Lavender brought over a plaque. I'm not sure what the plaque is, but we'll look at it and we'll talk about it. It's a, okay, it's the Brookfield Scholastic Recognition Award plaque. I suspect that it is a scholarship, the winners, yes, of the scholarship award that the town has issued since 1996. Yes. 18 years. So what we're going to do is take the plaque. And then we'll take the plaque and we'll find the proper place to, to display. So thank you, Tom. Does anybody else want the floor while we're waiting for our town clerk? And our assistant moderator, the various people who are busy pushing papers next door. What? There you go. No one's heard a good joke lately? I heard they failed to elect a pope today. I can announce that result. <laughs> It was the smoke that came out of the chimney. Oh, smoke. Yeah. 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 Well, smoke's been known to come out. Only out of the years. There we go. Perhaps we could ask what the plans are to make the bathrooms usable in this building. Oh, would the selectmen like to address the issue of the bathrooms? Sure, Rich. Um, Pipes broke about three weeks ago, flooded this room and the bathrooms pretty, pretty badly. We've had an insurance company come in. The insurance company adjuster from LGC came in 10 days ago or so, and they had a company come in this past week to try to dry the floor in here because it was watered on top of the floor and they think under the floor. In the bathrooms, uh, the sheetrock was damaged, the floors were damaged, the toilets and facilities were not cracked frozen but not cracked, but everything had to come out. The rug had to come out, the subfloor had to come out, and they spent a week drying the facility, trying to make sure we never have an odor problem or a mold problem. So uh, right now they're wrapping up the drying process. They'll be back on Friday to take the rug out of the vestibule because the water ran from the kitchen over the linoleum into the, the rug in the vestibule. We didn't want to take that out before the meeting, but that's coming out this coming Friday, and they'll dry that, that floor also. And then we have to decide how we're going to fix it. They'll work with us to fix it, but we have to decide how we're going to move forward. They tell us we have, not that we're going to take this long, they tell us we have two years to wrap the claim up, because I said, well, what about the floor? When's it going to cup? Do we have to take it up? And he says, give it a little time and see if it cups. And then you have to determine what you want to do. Maybe sand it, maybe pull it up. If we pull it up, how do we match it? I mean, there's all, all kinds of issues that we have to deal with. So what caused the break? Ran out of oil. Ran out of oil. Our automatic delivery didn't deliver. Uh-huh. Well, there's another oil line of development, isn't there? How's that? 
We had it all set up on automatic delivery, and the deliver and the, the company decided to put us on what is a 28 day deliver or whatever. Yeah, whatever delivery cycle they put us on. And it wasn't adequate, and the oil went dry. We don't know when it went dry. We know when it thawed. We think it was frozen for a while. Uh -huh. almost done. They're almost done. Yes. Very good. Very good. I'm glad to hear that they're almost so done. So are we looking for another oil supplier? Or are we... <laughs> <laughs> and it's been turned into the insurance companies. We were very fortunate on that because I got the call from uh, Mr. Nason because he was out back with his truck and all of a sudden there's a flood coming out from underneath the building. Uh, he didn't have a key to get in here, so uh, I came over and water shooting out all over the place. And uh, we were then turned off the pump from outside since we couldn't find a shut off that would work. That we stopped the water and then we went from there. The uh, a plumber, thanks to Jessica, she could give him a commercial. Uh, somebody she knows came over and uh, did the plumbing to get it set for us. We did, by the way, try to go through the usual channels <coughs> the plumbers we use, but none of them were available. So we went down the last one, too, and we went to the third. It was a Saturday morning. Yeah, it was a weekend, and they were at workshops or something. So. Well, while we're sitting here waiting, I think we should all consider the fact that we had an opportunity to bifurcate our town meeting a couple years ago, and we wouldn't be sitting here waiting. <laughs> Just to observe that. All right, very good. Yes, indeed. I'm happy about that. Making me feel nervous standing up here on the spot trying to entertain everyone. Jessica, yeah. Overextended sense of humor. Maybe Jessica could tell us something about the program in Wolfboro, the rec, where we use their facilities, what's available, and how they sign up. <laughs> she just volunteered. Basically, Brookfield residents have access to Wolfboro programs at Wolfboro rate, resident rates. That's and correct. And we pay. We pay a place. we pay a small fee at the beginning of the year to the Wolfboro Park and Rec Department, which allows us to get the same rates as Tufton Borough and Wolfboro residents, and it also puts us at the front of the list for the programs instead of being at the back of the list after all the Wolfboro and Tufton Borough kids get to select. And it saves the residents of Brookfield large dollars, depending on how many kids they actually utilize that. And it also has adult programs that we have access to, as well as just for the children. Um, anybody who has a child in hockey over there can attest that it's very expensive if you're not a resident or on that resident program. Gave yes, we uh, required that information the, because the it was a concern because of the cost. I don't know if it's in here, but it I, should I don't be. know if it was put in the report or not. We did ask for that number specifically because it's a fairly good amount we pay for that service. Was it yeah. worth the money or the cheaper to give everybody here? In 2012, 38 residents uh, bought 38 resident rate season passes at the Pop Whalen uh, and Abenaki. Hundreds of resident day uh, rate day passes to the Pop Whalen and Abenaki. 48 di individual resident rate registrations for programs such as day camp, soccer, bus trips, etc., and unlimited access to parks, playgrounds, beaches, new tennis courts, new basketball courts, bike paths, and more. Well, that we have anyway, right? I mean, we don't we don't get any stickers to go to the parks or playgrounds. We had that before. No. No. Okay. Just check. I mean, to the parks and the playgrounds, yes, but to get on the tennis courts, a lot of times you can't because they're they're reserved. Um, yeah, but you're on the bottom of the list to reserve them. Um, the bike pass, of course, we always had access to. Well, that 
also keep expanding that program. Right. Feeling like a very long, they're almost done to me. <laughs> no, one man's 15 is another man's hour. I hear you. I hear you. You're sitting and I'm standing. And you've been standing pretty much all day, too. Uh, that's right. You got it. You got it. While we're on it, can I ask another question about that? Please. Brad, did you want to make an announcement? <laughs> he, did, he says he doesn't want to make an announcement. No, he did before. He ah. and I made him wait. He said, wait till it's official. Uh, as I was starting to say earlier, you'll find all your things. Ah. You will find in the report, uh, the annual report, there are a couple of reports missing. Wi Fi, I mean, I did not meet these submission deadlines, so I probably should be able to update on those. One of them is the Forest Fire Award report. We had a very success successful season last year. I'm not excited, which I guess made it successful. <laughs> we didn't have any notable fires. Things went well. People in the town were going to behave. We did have a couple of non committed burns, but those were respectful treatment, so that wasn't a problem. And we think we issue somewhere around 100 campfire and burn permits a year. Right now, you don't need permits, however, or the snow is going, it may not be that long before we do. Remember, the fairground requires a permit. The other report that's missing is that of the emergency management. Yes, I'm also the emergency manager of the concept of the we have a little more exciting thing here from the emergency management than the brush fires. We did have the storm come through. This building was open as a shelter uh, for four days, available for anybody to take advantage of. We provide water <coughs> to the facilities. We don't provide the food. We'll be putting on food. We do have pots available if anybody needs to spend money, uh, disposable pillows, and Economy blanket, shall I say, you don't want to bring it on. You But if you ever need it, it is here. We usually go for about four hours after an event happens and set up the major power failure to be sure that it's not a blip in the system. And then we keep the building open until uh, generally around 8 or 9 o'clock in the evening. If nobody's staying over, we close it up until 7 o'clock in the morning. If people need to stay over, we need to leave the Thank you very much. If you'd like to go a little bit longer, we kind of need to fill the time. You know any good stories? There was no road committee before you. Quick. And thirdly, the road committee report. Yes, I also have to be a The road committee did meet last year. We made our list of recommendations to the selectmen. I feel at this point, I uh, agree with this lesson, we can pretty much have a handle on things, the way things are going. And uh, they've been prioritizing projects now. 
exclude all the documents and suggestions that make a priority and now have a prioritize or priority system. <coughs> and so there was a point of law three four months. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to go check on them again? <laughs> it's raining pretty hard. It is raining kind of hard out there. First they said 10 minutes, then they said it was hard. Okay, okay. They were using the calculator, so. Okay. I am wondering whether I need to intervene. Uh, well, what, do we know what the turnout was, Mr. Roderick? The turnout was approximately 50%. It was much heavier than I anticipated, and we had an awful lot of votes to count. Um, and uh, I think what I'm going to do, if no one objects, is to declare this meeting in recess and find out what's going on. Would anybody object to my doing that? In that case, I'm going to recess this meeting, and I will be back here momentarily. Yeah, you have an umbrella? Thank you. At this time, I'm going to declare the results of the elections. For selectmen, Clifton Camp, 90 votes. Brian Robichaud, 159 votes. There were three other votes. I declare Brian Robichaud our next selectman. Congratulations. <laughs> For the trustee to a two-year term, Richard Norton, 224 votes. I declare him the winner. <laughs> For a trustee to a three-year term, Thomas Lavender, 223 votes. I declare him the winner. For treasurer, Mary Lou McLean spelled correctly, 237 <laughs> votes, I declare her the winner. Only three tries, Mary Lou. For town clerk, Virginia McGinley, 238 votes, I declare her the winner. For planning board, Edward Camo, 181 votes. Richard Surrett, 176 votes. I declare them both the winner. For cemetery trustee, John Nelson, 231 votes. I declare him the winner. For auditor, John Nelson, 228 votes. I declare him the winner. For tax collector, Diana Peckham, 231 votes. I declare her the winner. Now the warrant articles. Article number two, 190 yes, 57 no. I declare that article two passes. Article number three, 188 yes, 55 no. I declare that article three passes. Article number four, 183 yes, 59 no. I declare that article four passes. Article number five, 189 yes, 44 no. I declare that article five passes. Article six, 53 yes, 205 no. I declare that article six fails. We'll then move on to the town more. There we go. Article number seven. Per RSA 3515 to see if the municipality will vote to appoint the selectmen as agents to expend from the town cemetery capital reserve fund previously established in 2003, the selectmen recommend this article. Would somebody like to make that motion? I'll make that motion. Thank you, is there a second? Second. Thank you. Would you like to speak to the article? Sure. 
What this does is allow the selectmen the authority to expend from that trust fund in case a piece of property was to come available and we were not ready for a town meeting yet, we would be able to purchase the property for a town cemetery at that point. Otherwise, we'd have to wait until a town meeting in order to have a town vote to buy that piece of property. And that piece of property may not be available at that time. So this gives us the, the select board the authority to purchase the property once the funds were, if there was enough funds in that fund available to be purchased, to purchase it. Yes, we are. We, we absolutely need a new town cemetery. There might be room for one more person. Uh, cemetery of Trustees, are you here? So what would be the accurate count of what's available in our cemetery at this point? It's probably one or two people that would be able to be, to be buried in the town, uh, town cemetery, unless they're cremated. There's room for cremations, I understand. How much, two questions, how much is in that trust fund? And if we didn't pass this, would, and we wanted to quickly with the process to have a special town meeting? If it was allowed. I'm sorry, well, I believe there's 9,800 <coughs> in the trust fund. It's, it's detailed in the trustees report, about 9,800. Yeah, there's not a lot. We've been slowly building it over the last few years. Um, we would have to take it to a special town meeting but in order to call a special town meeting, you have to take it before a judge, and they have to grant it. You can't just say, we're going to hold a special town meeting. It has to go through DRA and the courts in order to be able to, to, to call a special town meeting. Otherwise, you have to do it at the annual town meeting. This does take the citizens' right to vote on it away and puts it all on the Board of Selectmen to make that judgment call. In the past, it has always been up to the citizens to, to, to make that vote. Go ahead. It would seem to me that the citizens of Brookfield might have an interest in uh, voting for or against the location. Mm -hmm. That would be my concern about uh, not allowing that vote to take place in the town. Reasonable concern. Yes. Would it be reasonable to think that if a property came up and the selectman had this authority that you would have some sort of a hearing or something so that you would have the town's input and could therefore move on a potentially prime piece of property? I would hope that the board would do so. Since I'm a short time member here, I can't speak for the board going, in the, going forth, but that would be protocol. Yes, I would think so. I, I, <coughs> potentially have input into your decision. Definitely. It, I think it's, it lets us move forward and not have a special town meeting. But I, we can't do it in a vacuum. Right. Catherine, I'll recognize you if nobody else wants to speak because you've already spoken. Does anybody else want to speak? Then you may speak again. Uh, yes, to Janet's point, um, other lady's point, um, it, it's nice that we would have a, a, a meeting for it, but unless it's written down, we don't know what future selectmen will do. That's right. Yeah. So I, I might propose that we would amend this to say that um, we would have to have this, the selectmen should hold a meeting to that effect. You can propose that, and we'd be glad to give you a piece of paper. We might. We have paper. <laughs> Is there any further discussion? Are you ready for the question? I think she's got an amendment. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'll write the amendment. If I Catherine's going to write her amendment. Why don't you tell it to us what you're writing, and I will see if somebody wants to second it rather than keep this uh, impatient uh, town meeting without bathrooms right. waiting too long. Right, sorry. Um, I'm not sure what the verbiage would be, but uh, to appoint the selectmen as agents to expend the town's cemetery capital reserve um, uh, 
with the approval um, of the town at a special selectman town at a special selectman meeting. If that's the correct word. No. Okay. I don't know at a public hearing. It would be a public hearing. At a public hearing. So we're not appointing them as agents as well. Just Okay. Suggestion? Catherine, if you want to make it more like some zone zoning thing, you might require two public hearings. That way a lot of people, enough people, it doesn't really drag it out, but it gives a chance for a, a couple of hearings on this on this and that would be similar to some of the legislation for planning board issues, where you have to have old two public hearings. Frank, if you have good language, perhaps you'd like to help Catherine and, and write something down for us. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I said I wasn't going to write anything. That would be good. Sorry, would, you, would you like to be in charge of bringing it around for me? <laughs> Janet, I'll let you speak. Why don't you say one? I don't think it's necessary, yeah. but why don't you put previously established Provided, uh, input, provided public input via public hearings. Two public hearings. Yeah. Richard. And my comment was that there was a restriction in there. Of the majority has to approve it. Um, I, I like the idea of public input, mm -hmm. but I question whether you really want to tie the board's hands and say it has to be a 50% or greater vote. Public input. public input is provided there's public input via a public hearing prior to any decision. Okay. Well, I recognize you. Well, Bruce, I think the thing we have to be careful of is we don't change the intent of the uh, one article, otherwise, it won't be approved. That's so, true. adding some other things yeah. in there, we've got to be careful we don't cross that line. So saying, adding in there that now it has to be a public hearing or something like that, we might have to check with the attorney to find out if you cross the line. Or I propose that we amend Article 7 to add this phrase at the very end of the sentence to say, after two public hearings. Very good. Is there a second to the amendment? I second. I see two seconds there. Discussion on the amendment. Please. I recognize Tom Lab. You don't want to talk about the amendment. You just raised your hand. Okay. <laughs> Does anybody want to talk to the amendment? Uh, please, lift it. If you're uncomfortable with this, the great thing about the way we, we do business in this town is we have these, these wonderful annual meetings. If you're uncomfortable with this, vote it down. Come to the meetings. Let the selectmen know what it is that you want from them on this, and they can resubmit it next year. It's nothing that has to be done today. So depending on if you're comfortable or not, you, sh you as the public are giving up. Because even if you hold two public hearings, that board that's going to be sitting here or over there when, you, when they hold those, they're going to listen to your public input. And then they're going to vote the way that they feel they should vote. Mm -hmm. And it may not always be with how many people's in that room because we know the turnout there is not always a majority of the, of the, the people in this room, in, in the town. So if you onslaught one side or another in one of those public hearings, you, you can sway the public opinion one way or the other. So if you're uncomfortable with this, vote it down, put it back up next year with the language that you'd like. If you're, if you're comfortable with it, vote for it. Go ahead. Uh,
Bob, you had your hand up. Having uh, two public hearings, the other thing you have to look at is, is probably a requirement, a time requirement between when you can have one public hearing and then another, so you're going to have to do a posting. I kind of doubt the purchase of the cemetery property is going to have a real urgency where somebody has to sell it today or we're going to lose it. But the potential still is there that you may have to wait a period of time because of time requirements between public hearings, the postings, and all of that, where the potential is you could lose an opportunity to purchase something that you want to do. So and I'm not saying don't go with it. I'm just saying that's something we do have to consider. Do we have any other discussion towards the amendment? In that case, what we are voting on at this time is the amendment, which is to add the uh, phrase after two public hearings to um, warrant article number seven. All those in favor of the amendment say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Aye. I'm not sure how that turned out. So I'm going to ask you guys to raise your hands. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Would somebody please help me count? Uh, Bob, you can count that side of the room. I have seven over here. I have 15 on the other side. That makes 22. All those opposed, please raise your hand. I believe there are 29 no's. Um, I declare that the amendment fails. We're now back to the original question, which is to see if uh, we will pass Article 7 as we read it original. Is there further discussion? It doesn't need to be seconded. It's already on the floor. All those in favor of Article 7 as originally printed in the uh, town report, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed say nay. Nay. I declare that Article 7 passes. Article number 8. To see if the town will vote to raise the hourly wage from $7.25 per hour to $9 per hour for the members of the supervisor of the checklist for services performed. The selectmen recommend this article. Would somebody like to make a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Very good. Is there discussion? Yes. What's the approximate annual hour put in on this position? Would somebody like to answer the question? I was going to say, is anybody here from the? Uh, Are any of the supervisors here? I think still they, next door. I, th I think they left. Yeah. It depends on the year of the election, how many elections we have, so that will make a, a, a difference. Uh, what's happening because sometimes there's four elections a year, sometimes we're down to one, two, depending on the year. Yes, sir. In a year? Yeah. I would bet combined, all people combined, I would guess 50 hours. Um, that's just a guess on my part. Any further discussion? All those in favor of Article 8, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. nay. I declare that Article 8 passes. Article 9, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of <coughs> $55,000 to be added to the road and bridge repair capital reserve fund. The selectmen recommend this appropriation. Would somebody like to make that motion? I'll vote. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Would one of you like to speak to it? Sure, we're adding some extra money as usual. We've been putting money into that reserve fund all along. Uh, some of the road projects we were looking at were very expensive. So what we've decided to do this year is to put money in but take less, less out this summer so we can attack a bigger project next year. Uh, these are getting very costly and some of the projects we have uh, will be hurtful to our budget. So this is a way to improve something while putting other money in reserve so we can uh, tackle our bigger road project. But just for current, so you have you guys understand there's $78,455.73 in the fund now. 
with the addition of what we're, we're, we're putting in, um, it will bring our total up to over $100,000 back in that capital reserve fund. Any further discussion? All those in favor of Article 9, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, say nay. I declare that Article 9 passes. Article 10, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $43,000 for the major repair of town roads and to fund this appropriation by authorizing the withdrawal of said sum from the road and bridge repair capital reserve fund. The selectmen recommend this appropriation. Would somebody like to make that motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Brad. Out of curiosity, what project is Upper Moose Mountain, um, and depending where the money, what, what money left lies out, we have to do a survey on Bryce Drive. Is it Bryce? It's in Cedar Park. Right, Bryce Drive in Cedar Park, and then the portion of the hill um, on Bryce Drive, depending on how far the money goes and and um, where where it ends up. We don't want to strip out the, 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 the road budget for regular maintenance. Um, if we have to, ta you know, if, if there needs to be a little bit come out from that to finish the project, then I'm sure it can be worked out, but we don't want to tap it to do that. So those are the, the two projects that we have lined up for this year. Any further discussion? All those in favor of Article 10, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, say nay. I declare that Article 10 passes. Article 11, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $500 to be added to the conservation fund. The selectmen recommend this appropriation. Would one of you like to make that motion? I'll make the motion. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. It was a second. Good. I was wondering if there for a minute. Is there discussion? Okay. We don't want to talk about it. You guys ready to vote on it? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. The motion passes. Article 12. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $500 to be added to the Heritage Fund. The selectmen recommend this appropriation. Would one of you like to make that motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there discussion? Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say nay. The motion carries. Article 13. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $1,250 to be added to the capital reserve fund known as the town cemetery fund. The selectmen recommend this appropriation. Would one of you like to make that motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Gee, you guys are easy tonight. All those in favor say aye. 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 Rob, did you want to say something? I, yes. Rob, <laughs> we'll let you speak. Uh, I didn't, what, my question is, what is that fund used for? What is that? Please? That's the fund that is used for the upkeep and, and any major repairs voted on by town for the town cemetery, and also to put monies in there to buy land for a new cemetery. So, follow up question? Go ahead. Uh, is this enough money if we need to buy a new cemetery? No, it'll, it'll bring, the, it'll bring the, the fund up to almost $11,000. The idea is to build it up slowly but to build it up. So is the, the, the idea is that even though our cemetery is basically full, we have several years before we need to buy something? Not if anybody dies soon. You can't die for a couple of years. <laughs> can't use the bathroom. Can't die. <laughs> Isn't it nice to be Brookfield? <laughs> it's been that way for quite a while. 
um, the cemetery has, and we've, we've slowly been trying to build it up over the last few years and to keep moving in the right direction. The idea is not to, to put such a large burden on one year for the taxpayers and spread it out over, you know, a few years in order to build it up to a, to a price that we can afford. Okay. Just here. Oh, sorry. Uh, Jim Green again. Uh, I was wondering if I want to ask the board if there's been any uh, discussion with the abutters as far as selling some of the adjacent properties to expand the current uh, cemetery? Yes, that was discussed, but nothing has come out of it at this point. Uh, still my hope that maybe uh, somebody would be willing to give us a 20 feet around it or something and, and we'd have enough money to do that, but uh, it was unsuccessful. They prefer to leave it like it is. Richard? This past summer, Tom Hill and myself went over to Wolfboro. They're putting in a new cemetery over in the south side of town, and we talked to the director in charge of that. I forget his name. What we found out is that the prices, or the cost of installing a cemetery are all over the place. Uh, do you have to stump it, or is it a field? It, do you have to perk it, or not perk it? Is there a ledge, or not ledge? The work they're doing on town-owned land on the south side of town, I think it's... Middleton Road. Thank you. They're budgeting $60,000, but that was for forested land that had to be logged, and they had wetland issues. So, the bottom line is, you really can't ballpark the cost it, 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 it's based upon the type of land you can acquire. If it's a nice field someplace, you're in good shape. If it's a forest, it's very, very expensive. Any further discussion? Pam. Um, it's always a hope that there will be someone who is, this money would be <coughs> a stipend to someone mm -hmm. that would voluntarily offer their land to the town some land rich person might decide to offer five acres or so to the town whose money would be um, able to do the stumping if it were needed or do the maintenance. The town might even decide to name it after them. Yes. <laughs> Back there. Uh, well, I know Bill jokingly said that, you know, don't dice them, but what are we telling our citizens that may want to be buried in Brookfield? I mean, what are we talking about? What's our answer? Frank. Um, I was one of the original cemetery trustees uh, when we constituted that. We've had two interments in the last 15 years, and there are probably three or four more spots. There's one spot that's reserved for an individual who wants to be buried next to his wife, and he's already got his spot there. So uh, we haven't had a lot of interments. There's a lot of room for urns if someone wants to be cremated. So uh, we, I, I really would like to see this fund go forward. Um, I would like to I agree with Rob, and maybe might want to put more money in than we're putting into now. So if someone could make an amendment to up this number. <coughs> uh, we're probably going to look at a situation where somebody will donate this land, and we'll use this money to do whatever clearing or whatever preparation we need to turn it into a cemetery. Brad. Uh, we did not complete voting this question. And I've forgotten how many people said aye, so I'm going to have to ask that question again. Any further discussion? See, you guys are just being too easy on me before, you know. It's just, <laughs> we got to have a little bit of fun at town meeting or it wouldn't be town meeting. Yeah. Anybody else want to talk about the cemetery fund? In that case, we'll vote on the question again. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. The motion carries. Next question is Article 14 to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate $8,000 to be added to the property uh, re-evaluation expendable trust fund. The selectmen recommend this appropriation. Would one of you like to make that motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Would anybody like to discuss this? Back there. John Chambers, what is this? I have no idea what this is. Go ahead, Cliff. Every five years, the town goes through a re-evaluation and we have a contract with Avatar to do that reevaluation. We pay Avatar a yearly fee um, up to that point. And on the fifth year, when they actually do the full blown um, reevaluation of the town properties, there's a huge charge 
to go along with that reevaluation on top of their regular fee. And what we've done is we've, we've spread this fee out over the five year period. Actually, I think it's been over four years this time. To, well, we've asked for, for $8,000 for four years, which will give us $32,000. And on the fifth year, it'll be just a small amount that we have to, to budget in to cover the cost of, that, of the whole town's reevaluation. We've done it in the past and the previous revaluations as well. Tom. Mr. Meyer, report of information the state requires a revaluation every five years, I believe. Yes, yes. we are required. Yeah. That is correct. Used how to be 10. They don't tell us how we have to pay for it. Right. <laughs> is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. The motion carries. We now move on to the budget. This is everyone's favorite article. <laughs> to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the selectmen's recommended sum of $633,719 for the town operating budget. Said sum does not include special or individual articles addressed in this warrant. The selectmen <laughs> recommend this appropriation. Would one of you like to make a motion? Make a motion. Is there a second? Second. Very good. Would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, we put together the motion. I guess I, by luck, by luck draw. Okay. We put together the budget uh, very carefully. Uh, we think we've done a good job trying to keep down uh, expenses in this past year. We ended up with a, a surplus. Uh, our goal here is to do the same. We believe that the numbers in here are realistic. And... Uh, Obviously, it's up to you folks whether you want to stick with these figures or change them. We did reduce the budget by over $15,000 compared to last year's budget overall. So most of, a lot of things that are in this budget, we really have minimal control over. If, for example, some of the large expenses in here are for fire, police protection, uh, ambulance. Uh, landfill. Landfill. Those things are, we're given a contract from Wakefield and it take it or leave it, and if we leave it, then we have to figure out something on our own. So those are pretty much fixed charges, and a number of others in here are fixed that, in a sense, that we have somewhat limited uh, say over. Mr. O'Hunter. Dick Packham. Uh, looking at page 19, total appropriation proposed uh, approximately 750,000. I assume this is your budget figure that you're asking us to vote on, plus the warrant article figure. Is that correct? No, the 750,000 includes all the warrant articles. Yes. Okay, I just wanted people to be aware when they look at the 750,000 plus that it includes the warrant articles. It's mm -hmm. not so stated here. Right. Okay. So that's really the budget. Yes. And last year's appropriations were $766,000, and this year's total appropriations would be $750,969. Sir? Spike. Why do the selectmen like to answer that? Absolutely. I would just like to say one of the things that now I believe is an assistant to the selectmen. Am I correct in that? Whereas before they had no administrative assistant. Mm -hmm. Clifton? First off, we've always had an administrative assistant okay. since I've been on the board. And, um, the selectmen's salary, it was discussed in the selectmen's meeting that. Uh, we were going to, we talked about reducing the selectmen's salaries to $3,500. Upon review of the RSAs, the selectmen don't have control of their salaries. You as a townspeople do. When you elect a selectman, he takes a contract, he, he has a contract with the townspeople 
The townspeople set his salary. Now, as an individual, you have the option of, of selecting a lesser salary than what is what the town agrees on. But if the town says the salary is going to be $5,000, you have to budget $5,000 because if, like in this instance, there's a new selectman coming up here, this board could not speak for that new selectman's mindset. And because the, the, the townspeople had voted to give the select board $5,000, it would not be fair to the new selectman to come in here and be, and be saddled with that when he had no input to it. The townspeople need to set the selectman's salary, and I've said it all along. The townspeople who select, so set the elected officials' salaries, whether it be the selectman, the tax collector, the town clerk, the trustees of the trust funds, it's all done by the townspeople at this meeting. It is. $5,000 is what, what the townspeople voted on the last time. So it has to be budgeted for $5,000. Now, if an individual selectman wishes to take less than that or take no salary, that's up to the individual selectman. But if the town wanted to reduce the salary, it would be in amendment to this budget? It would be amendment to this, this art, Warren article that we're talking about right now. Because of the because of the RSAs. I guess I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in the RSAs, it says that the selectman salary is set by the townspeople at town meeting. Right. 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 So we, as a select board, cannot change that on the budget because we don't have the authority to change the budget after it's voted on, or change our salaries after it's voted on by the townspeople. Only the townspeople can change that salary. So, in other words, if we wanted to change it, we could change it by amending this budget. Yes, ma'am. Yep. Mr. Packham, did you want to say something? No. Uh, it was clarified. Thank you. Frank. In the interest of further discussion, I'd like to make an amendment to this uh, budget. My amendment here is, is written out. Thank you. you want to hear it or Frank's amendment says I move to amend budget line item 4130.101 to be uh, $7,500. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Would you like to elaborate for the town? I will. I, first off, I swore I wouldn't do this again. I've done it now three or four years ago. Point of order, Mr. Monitor. Yes. I don't believe that motion has been seconded. Second. Thank you. What, okay. was, what was the um, line item again? Uh, the line item is 4130.101. Uh, you're correct, it hadn't been seconded, but I wanted to understand what he was doing before I even asked for a second. Okay. The, okay. The, uh, uh, what I'm proposing here by, by amending this budget line item, which is currently $15,000 in this budget to $7,500, is reducing the selectman salaries to $2,500 each from their current $5,000. Again, as I said, I wasn't going to do this again because it <laughs> hasn't gone over too well in the last few times, but it appears there's a little more interest to discuss this, and because the selectmen themselves spent a lot of time discussing this uh, issue this year. Um, $5,000 is more than any other town of near our size or even close to our size pays their selectmen in our county and in a good portion of our state. Uh, as we've discussed before, there are a lot of selectmen who earn the $100 a year that our state assemblymen earn um, to, uh, to go at Concord on our behalf. At some point, elected officials stop being public servants and they, st and they start being public employees. I think that this, our current salary is too high. I've thought it for a long time. This is effectively cutting it in half. Uh, it's still a very, very generous amount of uh, money compared to everybody around us, and I think it's a, a reasonable amendment to this uh, budget. Good. We have an amendment that's been made and seconded. Do we have any other discussion to the amendment? Correct. Yes, sir, Mr. Moderator. A long time ago, I was a selectman. It took quite a few hours a week. Life has changed a lot. It takes a lot of hours a week. I would say many weeks, it takes up at least 10 hours a week performing their duties. <coughs> as far as being an employee, 
a lot of unemployed people out there. But how many times do we have a contested race for selectmen? Like almost never. I don't think there's a lot of people jumping in this because it's a job. If they do 10 hours a week, that gives them, what, 500 hours a year? That's paying them $10 an hour, compensating them $10 an hour for their time. Today's economy folks, but that's not a lot of money. Uh, I think they do a very good job, and I think they work every penny that they earn. Thank you, sir. Ernest Brown, Clark Road. I can safely vouch that the selectmen that are on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Um, it was not unusual with our alarm system to get an alarm on, on 11 o'clock on a sunny night where you have to come over because you get a low temperature alarm. Uh, there are constant things, there are constant phone calls from constituents. Uh, this 5,000 a year, uh, that's 15,000 to run the entire town. I don't think that's uh, excessive. I think that's quite reasonable. Uh, other towns that do have lower rates frequently have a town administrator. Uh, this town does not have that. And so I would urge you uh, to turn down this amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chickron. <laughs> well, they pretty much said everything I was going to say, but but I would like to agree with them. I don't think the selectmen make too much money. Uh, Fifteen thousand dollars. This was a job breaker in our seven hundred and fifty-three quarters of a million dollar budget. Uh, it's only a couple of percent of it, and the selectmen really do catch all the flag. I know the selectmen because I live near the mall, and I know they catch all the flag. So. I don't think $15,000 is any hope to die. If the reach pays $15,000, I might consider reduction in their salary for supporting that, but not, not five grand. Not for all the stuff they have to deal with all year long. <clears throat> is there any further discussion to the amendment? Yeah. Um, Mayor Berger, I think that the, as we just discussed, we're putting the, the uh, supervisor of the checklist to do a, a heck of a good job and they have a lot, of, a lot of extra work to do. And they're just going finally up to $9 an hour. So I think that um, $10 an hour isn't to be sneezed at at all. Um, the other thing is that this is a small town. I know there's calls and so on, but it is still a small town. And comparatively to other towns that don't, that are twice or three times the size, and that don't have administrative assistance or anything else. Um, and they get paid far less. And they end up doing the job from their heart, not for the money. And even though it doesn't seem like much to some people, it, it is uh, a substantial amount, I think. And in this economy, people are losing jobs, and and their salaries are going down, Medicare is going down, everything's you know getting cut, and prices are going up, and it's just uh, I don't think it's unreasonable. If someone wanted to amend it to go slightly higher than that, that's fine. But I I think that um, five thousand is, is extreme. Okay, we're we're not entertaining amendments to amendments, Mr. Collins. I think that the the idea of Paying selecting what we think they're worth as if they were a job is a little bit misguided. Um, and we, I'm not sure why we would apply that only to selectmen. Uh, in, in town, we have a number, quite a number of elected officials that are paid nothing. And I think that's totally appropriate. I don't think that people should be doing it for the money. I think well, public service, it's, it's very good for people actual you know, service, not a job. I, I support Frank's motion. If I had made the motion, I would have been setting it to zero, not proposing an amendment to the amendment. Thank but, you. <laughs> but I think that, that, that you know, it's a very reasonable to lower the amount to uh, closer to zero. Good. In the back, John Chambers, I just wanted to say that I would second what Rob Collins says. Uh, for me, no person who is elected to any office anywhere should be paid a dime for anything. 
If you think you should be getting money, then don't run for the job. If you are in an elected position, you're running for that position to fill it as a service to the public. That is what you're doing it for. There should be no remuneration for it whatsoever. Uh, Jim Reno, uh, again, again, it comes down to, uh, I'd like the idea that the selectmen shouldn't vote on their own salaries. It comes down to what we believe their service is worth to us. Uh, I know for a fact that uh, all the selectmen, I'm sure our selectmen like will do the same, uh, go around and talk to everybody, take part in our activities, run around, use their own gas, their own supplies, uh, supplement our own budget by what they contribute. And uh, I, for one, would uh, support uh, leaving it as this. I am not going to deny the selectmen the right to vote on this amendment. Oh, not on the amendment, but as far as on their own salaries. That's what we're talking about. I, I also believe it should be left as it is. Um, please don't forget that the selectmen do not only their job, they serve on every committee, they're in on every meeting, they're the ones that uh, have been spearheading our breakfasts and our you know, Saturday morning things, and they, they, they do a lot. And it's a huge responsibility. Um, when we're all laying in bed snug when there's a blizzard and somebody's calling them because their street isn't quite right, or you know, the town hall has problems, that, that's extra hours they have to find, pull out of their hat. And if you as an individual um, imagine having a family and a full-time job and everything else and then doing another job on top of that and a job that you don't really know how many hours you are going to have to commit on any given day, I think to have somebody on call um, is, is worth what they're being paid. Frank, I'll recognize you after everybody else has spoken. Mr. Ciccaroni, the same comment. Is there anybody who has not spoken yet who would like to speak? Okay. Well, Bob Lamb. You know, I've attended these meetings for quite some time now. I've been a resident in this town for a long time. And I noticed that every year it's about the same amount of people or the same people would come. And it wasn't too many years ago these same people voted to give these selectmen that $5,000 salary. So I want to know what's changed. Why is everybody going to change your heart? I personally think that the, the salary and the, what they do is worth the five thousand dollars, and I will vote against the amendment. Good. Anybody else who's not spoken? Catherine, did you speak already? No, then you may speak again. All right, Catherine Collins. Um, I, I'd like to address a, a couple things. One is we do have a line item for expenses for the selectmen, so this would not take away from their expenses. Um, the other thing is there is no doubt in anybody's mind that what they're doing is a very valuable service. $5,000 does not cover really what it is that they do. But what we're trying to address is that this is a public service. It should not be a salaried position. And um, we are a town of, what, 231 households? This is a very, very high salary for 231 households to support. We were just talking about if we have just to put it in context, do we have $1,250 to give to our cemetery committee or to our cemetery fund? And now we're talking about $15,000. That's a very big chunk of change for a very <coughs> small town at a very difficult time. We value very much what you all do. Um, and there are a lot of people who put a lot of time, our whole planning board puts a lot of time in. I'm not saying that we don't, I'm just saying that um, it, it's just far too much money, really, for us to, as a small town, to be offering. That's my question. Is there anybody else who hasn't spoken yet to the amendment? Please. Harriet Wilson, Clark Road. I have just three points. Um, one is I think the salary is a bad word for it. I think it's a stipend. Mm -hmm. Number two, I don't see large numbers of people jumping to do this job even at $5,000 a year. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, I don't want people confusing a town administrator with an administrative assistant. Mm -hmm. An administrative assistant is a secretary. I was a secretary at the Paul School for probably 15 years. In lieu of a raise, I became an administrative assistant. It doesn't give me any more authority. These people have the authority to run this community, and I think they do a good job. And as one who's called Ernie a couple of times about the road agent and a couple other things. I know they work a lot of hours that are not here. Is there anybody else who hasn't spoken to this yet? In that case, I'll recognize people who speak a second time. Frank? 
Yeah, I'd just like to point out that the, the line Kavner mentioned, the selectman expense line, which is $900 for 300 each, that is a stipend. That's paid to them once a quarter. They do not have to submit any expenses or not. That was put in a number of years ago because the selectmen do do, they only go buy light bulbs. They do do out of pocket expenses. They do have gas expenses. This allowed them um, to, uh, uh, um, uh, to spend to, to just get a reimbursement without them having to do a lot of paperwork for it. There are other mileage and uh, um, uh, uh, there's other expenses they can charge for uh, travel and meetings, um, which uh, they could use if they the town meetings and their expenses. So they have ways to recoup their expenses. So we're, we're we you know if that's not adequate, we could look at that line, but it's there. Mr. Chikrani, I'll recognize you again. Uh, well, we're back to the old uh, philosophical thought of should people get remunerated for their time? And I believe that they always should get remunerated for their time. And this <coughs> notion of public service as being something that we all should donate on a giant basis of 10 hours or 15 hours a week and being on call is something we should do for nothing. I don't believe that for a minute. I'm on the planning board. I've been on it. I do it for nothing. But it doesn't take me that much time. I, owe, I, I, I have a, a lot of other things in my life that prevent me from donating tons of time to the planning board. But I do come in at least once a month and sometimes twice a month. But to ask the selectman to donate 10 hours a week of his life or, or more, and it probably is more by the time they finish fielding the phone calls, and not paying them any money because it's their civic duty to do this for nothing is absolutely preposterous. I mean, we're perishing in an, in an orgy of self-sacrifice in this country, and I, I think it's absolutely ridiculous that we have to select them to turn in their $5,000 stipend for the good of this uh, community. I think the community benefits from their $5,000 salary in many ways because quality people do quality work, and they should get compensated for it. That's all I've got. Any further discussion? Yes, Mr. Moderator. I'd like, to down the I'd like to make a challenge. Each laborer, each professional in here. Put your time where your mouth is, put your pocket where your mouth is. Next year, run on the ballot, take this job for three years, see what's involved. If you work 60 hours a week as it is, I want to see you give another 10 to this town for nothing. These folks work hard. We need to support them, not destroy them. Take this challenge. <laughs> Can I call the question? After I recognize Janet, I'll let you do I just want to say, just look at the last item. I mean, they've saved and cut our budget by more than what the $15,000 salary is, and every year they managed to hold it down as much as possible. So that alone is worth something. Okay, are you ready to vote on the amendment? Yes. All those in favor of the amendment, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say nay. 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 Amendment fails. We're now back to the discussion of the budget. This is further discussion of the budget. Um, as far as the budget is concerned, how much of the budget actually goes to the Governor Wentworth School District as far as school taxes? None of this budget that's before you, that's printed out here, goes before the goes to the Governor Wentworth School District. We do not include the Governor Wentworth School District budget in with ours. This is strictly, our budget is strictly to operate our town. The Governor Wentworth School District's money, the state's money, and the county's money comes out of the taxes and goes to them. And the rest of the taxes goes to cover your budget. So what we charge for, what we pay for in our budget is minor to what we pay to the schools and everything else. Okay. Uh, could you repeat your announcement that you made before in case people came in late about the uh, under defender listing? The misprint the of uh, the Grand Wester School really is the problem. I think you just repeated it for us. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Beeler. Well, there was a point of information that it was $1,100. Fifty-four thousand forty-nine dollars that 
the town paid the governor went to the school district in 2004. $1,154,049 went to the, to the school district to pay for the education of, of our children. And how many are there in this town? 84. 84 at this point. A million dollars to educate 84 children? That, that discussion goes to the school board. They have an annual meeting at the high school. And that decision is made that budget and everything is developed there. And they have uh, opportunities for people to go and express their views. And then they prepare their own ballot, which we have nothing to do with that's presented to you. So basically out of the loop line. And I will rule that discussion of the school district budget is out of order at this point in time. We're talking about the town budget. And that is not an item in the town budget. Mr. Moderate, moderator, um, in past years we've had a Warren article to fund a scholarship program, I believe. And I noticed that there's a line item on page 16, 4199.502, near the bottom, under other general government called Selective Friendly Commission. Is that what that line is? Yes. And the reason it's not funded this year is there's close to $40,000 in debt fund. And we disperse about a thousand and seven seven hundred and fifty to a thousand dollars a year. At that rate we've got forty years worth of funding of that. Okay, and my follow up question is that last town meeting we I, I had asked a question about homeschoolers being eligible for that. Mm -hmm. I intended to allow an opportunity to discuss other items and I think that would be in order after we finish discussing the budget. Okay. Is there any further discussion to the budget? Seeing none, all those in favor of the budget, please say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Nay. I declare the budget passes. Mr. Collins, as other business, I will now turn to you with your prior question. So last year I brought up the, I asked the selectmen if they would consider Sorry. Uh, last year I asked the selectmen to the reconsider their policy regarding the scholastic fund uh, to be inclusive of homeschoolers. I believe that some work happened on that. Can you update us on that? Uh, Richard chaired the committee to uh, work on that along with my wife Stephanie and our new selectmen. So uh, I'm going to give the floor to Richard and let him answer the question. We, we formed a committee, Brian was on it, Stephanie was on it, we tried to put together a war article to deal with all the students in town, whether they went to Wolfboro, homeschool, Dover, wherever they went, we were trying to put them all into a scholarship type war article. Uh, the committee did a pretty good job, they did an excellent job, they submitted it to the selectmen and just before war time, and as we reviewed it, 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 quite, it wasn't quite there. There were some holes that people in the audience raised. They asked questions and we couldn't answer the questions. Therefore, we didn't think it was wise to put it on, on the ballot. It's still an active item. What we learned is we have to start a little earlier to polish that up for next year. But the other thing is, is you would have to start a whole new scholarship fund because the, the current scholarship fund that has been created can only be utilized for that, what it was created for. You can't close it out and transfer it over into a new fund. You have to utilize it for what it was meant to be. Under our current scholarship award, all students of Brookfield that are seniors, whether they're homeschooled or they go to Brewster or they go to any other school, charter schools, or they go to Governor Wentworth School Districts, are eligible as long as they meet the criteria and they have the highest GPA, because I, I believe that's what it, what, what it said is, it's the highest GPA. So all of them are available to the scholarship that's already set up, and that's according to the town attorney. And, and that's the challenge. We've got different ways of generating GPAs based upon school system, based upon homeschoolers, based upon a number of things. So how do you normalize that? So everybody's getting a fair shake. And that, that's exactly the difficulty we ran into. And so instead of funding the scholarship, you know, fund this year, they put it off to see if they were going to start a new scholarship fund under new guidelines 
instead of going forth with the old system. Um, but the old system still works as long as they can have a GPA that can be utilized. They can be awarded the fund, whether they're homeschooled or not. And actually what the lawyer said was we could move the money if we go to probate court and justify why we want to right. close down one trust fund and start another. But the probate court has to make that decision. Stephanie? <coughs> But I think all of you know that in the last 20 years, homeschooling has grown, and we've also had students in private schools. Colleges, for example, do not compare grade point averages just straight across the board that remind what kind of high school you went to. So we know that might be opening a can of worms. But as I understood it, we, we wrote a completely new application for the scholarship. And it would include um, test scores and other academic uh, achievement measures, like what types of courses students took. It was all put into place. And I do want to tell you that we did that. One thing that's a real sticking point that I think they're trying to explain to you, but I'm just going to put it in my plain English, is that that fund's been around for a while. Private donors have given money to that fund also. And if we were to suddenly change the criteria to say, open to everybody, not just on the basis of GPA, but maybe your SAT scores or the level of coursework you took. Maybe there would have been somebody who donated money in the past who now doesn't want their money to go to such a fund. So we're kind of potentially maybe stuck with two funds, old fund and a new fund. Brian, you put a lot of work to this. Would you like to speak to that? And then I'll give Mr. Levin this look. Stephanie summed it up really well. We, we, we had a good finished product. It was more of just getting the money from one account to the other, and it became a real sticking point from what we understood. We put a multitude of criteria in there with a degree of subjectivity that the selectmen was gonna, were gonna appoint a panel to then review the applications and look at the criteria as long as any additional information that the applicant wanted, which would have given us the ability to look at objective scores as well as subjective issues that may allow us to then grant it to somebody that may not fit the exact mold. But it was just, it, it was really a, a money thing, a legal issue, if you want to just call it that. So we're going to hope to get it ironed out this year. Mm -hmm. Mr. Lapp. Uh, I just want to point out that there's really two funds, okay? One fund is, uh, comes from public donations, nothing to do with the town, and that has about $31,000 in it. The other fund is from town money, and that has about $8,500 in it. Good. I uh, think we can uh, trust our committee will continue to work on this, and we'll come with a finished project that passes legal muster before they bring it to the town. Um, do we have anything else that needs to come before this meeting at this time? I uh, would like Ernie Brown to stand up so that everybody recognizes that this is his picture in your town report. <laughs> we want to thank him. I would also like to ask Clifton Camp to stand up because he's done an awful lot of work for us for quite a few years. Is there any other business that needs to become for the town? In that case, I declare this meeting adjourned.